Hello everybody, welcome back to the ZHP Garage and today we are going to finally be putting back the Nova all together. And today we're going to finally be putting the Nova back together. After I think about 17 episodes-ish of taking it apart and you know doing all sorts of miscellaneous work, putting the engine together which took a lot of time, getting a lot of things mocked up, getting stuff painted, getting everything all set up in order for us to finally be able to hopefully smoothly go back together. So I wrote up a list generally in the order that we're gonna be putting this car back together. So let's go over that right now. So this is what we got, the Nova to-do list. So we got both the front suspension back together, which we're gonna be doing in this video. Finished both of the floors, which is the driver's side and the passenger side. And it's sad to say we did not get it done. We didn't get the passenger side floor done before this video, like we said in the last video. So we're gonna have to work on that in between this video and the next video, which it will be done when we come in the next video for sure. Then after both floors are complete, we're gonna go on to completing the passenger side mini tub and block off plate that we have talked about. That is gonna go right there. And also ignore this, this line right here. I didn't mean to put that. We're gonna set the engine and trans in the car once and for all, once we are done the front suspension and we're done with the floors, we don't wanna be making any cutting and grinding while we are, while we have the engine training there, we don't wanna mess up the training in any sort of way. And that stuff's mainly the main focus right now. All this rest of this stuff will come later on, but I'm just gonna be taping it to the wall right here and crossing it off as we go. Every time we start a video and end a video, we're gonna be crossing off at least one of these things on this list. It's finally all coming together. Everything that we've been working for, for the past about a year, it's starting to finally come together and it's looking really good. So we're excited about it. We're glad you guys have been enjoying it too. You know, the support's been really, really good on the videos and we, we really appreciate that. So let's not waste too much more time. This thing is fully gutted. We wanna get it going back together and we're gonna show that right now. Let's start with the front suspension. This thing on? I don't know, is it on? Oh, we're on, we're on, we're live. We're back, we're back with this nice Nova again. Yes, sir. So we got the front suspension back from powder coating. We got the firewall painted as you guys that are tuned in on our Instagram would have already seen, but um, we're gonna show it here on the video for those of you that have not seen that. And we're just gonna get into it. We're gonna get this thing together. We're gonna start putting the car back together. There's no more tearing apart. It's pretty much all going back together from here. So here it is. We got it all back from powder coat. We decided to go with the silver to give it a little little contrast. Yeah, so everything's not black. Firewall painted, got new hardware. You can see that we're getting, everything's grade eight. And on the bottom here, we went to a half inch bolt from a 7 16 and they're all grade eight. Fat washers, and then this one here bolts into the to the subframe. So you wanna make sure your front end's on here good and tight when you're cruising cruising down the freeway, you know, 150 miles an hour. Got Fierro's trying to keep up with you or something. So we're gonna get this hardware out here, and you can see that because of the big washers, that in the back side, we had to notch it a little bit to clear all the little dimples and you know, cause it's such a bigger, we want to go with a good big washer. So we have grabs a lot of surface area. So we know that the front end is going to stay on there. It's going to be tight. But pretty much we're half inch already. One of them, this one here was, or this one, one of them was like seven sixteenths. So it was pretty much a locator. And then the other ones are a little bit bigger to room to move, but we had to open them all up to half inch. I got the little bracket put on here. It's going to be kind of hard to see cause everything's black, but. These are, these are where these bulkheads are gonna go into for the feed and return lines. And I put a little bit of anti-seize on here. It's not a bad idea. We're not gonna get them too too tight, even though you, it's all ginormous, you know, one inch. We're not gonna get too, too crazy tight. You just wanna snug it down to the bracket there. So, got our feed and return are both dash eight. All right, we're gonna get this subframe bolted on so we can start putting it together. We got a good old, good old Art Jones here to help us out. How's the neighborhood? Well, here it is, we got it all on. I like the bigger bolts for sure. Covers the corner nice, torque them down, 90 foot pounds. These ones here I didn't torque yet because the little hood, hood hinge bracket here has some adjustment to it, so I gotta wait till I get the fenders on. I think I'll do the control arms next. Like I said before, we're gonna go through all this suspension. It's pretty much, we're gonna treat it like it's brand new because I don't know if anybody lubed it, tightened it. So we're gonna make sure that it's all tight and lubed so we don't want any issue going down. Cruising down the freeway, 150 or something. We're gonna put in our fittings for our brick lines. Goes right here, like so. We had to clean this out a little bit after we get it, after we had it powder coated. I think it'd be easier to put the adjustment, little notches for the, to turn it in the front. But we wanna make sure to lube this up. So I'm just gonna put a coat of wheelbarrow grease on this thing to keep it from rusting up. You gotta be careful, cause 
If you can't get the nut, this has two different nuts on here. A little cover, a little fancy nut, and then a normal lock nut. So ideally, you probably want to put this together before you put the braces on it. But we have room to come in from the back, but if you can't come in from the front, you gotta pay attention if you got enough space. We're gonna do the same. We're gonna put a little black coat of grease on this guy. We don't want it, don't want it rusting up in there. We want everybody to move free. But when you slide this in, you gotta line up your control arm at the same time. So you see how one has got more thread than the other side. The shorter one's for the little cap, little cap nut. Sneak it in here. Gonna be very snug. Make sure you got the two washers on this one. Cause you need this to spin inside of here when you rotate this to adjust the alignment. So that's why you want to lube on the shaft. So we're gonna put the cap on the front, but we're gonna put a little anti-seize on the threads before we put it together. You see the front, see the back one has a nylon lock. The front one just a normal little little fancy nut, little cover. So you, you don't want it super crammed on there tight because you want this control arm to be able to, to move. You don't want it to it's like a happy medium. You don't want it super, super tight, but you want it tight. <laughs> that makes any sense. <laughs> Still have to align this thing. So I'm not gonna worry about cranking these things down tight. I just wanna get it pretty, you know, pretty snug. Plus it's not at right height. You don't, want to, you don't want to tighten it up, you know, until it's on the ground. So we just want to get these tight enough to the point so we can take it and get it aligned. So now the top ones, I'll put the set screws in in a minute. So now I'm gonna put the lower, the lower control arm on and do the same thing. I'm gonna put a light, light coat of grease. Plus, if you wanna take it apart, you know, down the road, something happens, it actually comes apart. You gotta watch these little washers here. So this one stayed on here and you got one on this side, but it's, if you can tell, it's got a bevel to it. But you want it to cup bushing and sit like so. Lube it up, sir. You see how this control arm, not stupid tight on there. This is gonna flex when you tighten down. It's gonna, it's gonna, Take that gap up. Make sure you wipe off your excess grease and everything. You know you lubed it. You don't need to hang it out to find out that you lubed it. See, we got this one. We got it snug down. You see there's no more gaps. It actually holds itself in place. That's pretty much all you want it to do for right now is you just, just snug so you can move it. You don't want it super crammed. Just snug it down. And then now we're gonna put our, this one's moving because we don't have the set screw in here. So it's gonna be a little free, free floating. So I'm gonna put the coil over in next. Sneak that in there. So now I'm gonna put the sway bar on because you can see how the sway bar comes around. It's a little, little interesting. So it goes in the back and then it loops around. And then it goes, this bolt here comes through here. And then it goes and that's what goes to the lower, the lower of the uh, coil over. So I'm gonna hang the sway bar now so I don't have to hold all these parts. And this this all ground down bolt, that's the way it came. I don't know why it's a little interesting, but that's, I didn't do that. The sway bar just bolts in the back back here with these four little quarter inch bolts. So we're using a little quarter inch ratchet for a quarter inch bolts. So now we got a sway bar on here. So this we're not gonna put grease on here because it's, it's no bushing or, or it's just metal on metal. You just wanna pretty much keep it just so you can take it back apart later. So we're just gonna put some anti-seize on here and on the threads. We'll just put a film film anti-seize in here. This is just so you can take it back apart. It's not trying to lube it so it moves. And so this goes through this heim on the sway bar here. Then it's gonna go into this little spacer. Then it's gonna go and hold our coil over to the lower control arm. Good thing we got aluminum engine in this thing. Let's Why's wait, that? Let's wait on this little bolt here. Then we got a washer and we got our little nylon lock nut. So this, because it has a heim joint, you can go ahead and tighten this bolt up tight, tight. And being that this is in the, this has a little pushing in here that can move. So we're gonna tighten both of these up fully tight. And now our upper control arm can get out of the way. We can put our spindle in here. We're gonna tighten our bottom up. So they torqued out 35 foot pounds. And then we're going to get our Allen back. Allen, Allen wants to stay and hang out. All right, so after we get it together, make sure to lube it up. So we wanna make sure that your rubber, this rubber got a little pushed in. So when we, when we put together the Spindle will push it down before you lube it. You just want to make sure that you want to make sure that the, the rubber's not just gonna let the grease come right back out. And make sure you got your this one here, you know, to fall off on you when you're not looking. So make sure you got your upper rubber on there. We'll set it on the bottom because the spring will support all the weight. That started. Then we can just rotate it up. Yeah, these have the little notches in here, and there's a hole in the there's a hole in the ball joint that a cotter pin goes through here. So it's not like you can torque this because it's not going to wind up being in a spot where the cotter pin is going to line up. You snug it down and then you just go to the point where it lines up the notch with the hole. So I got a hole right here, so I got to go a little bit tighter. So then when you, you tighten it down, 
to line it up. That's about as tight as you're going to get it. And the same on the top. Ball joint's tapered, so you're sucking it into the taper. Your resistance is pretty much your rubber, is what you're tightening against down the taper. So you snug it down, and then once you get it snug, you see where you're at, where your hole's going to be, so you can put a cotter pin in there. That's pretty much as tight as it needs to be. So we got our spindle tight. We got the cotter pins, cotter pins in it. See, little, little cotter pin hanging out. And you see on this front end, this, this little offset cam here, you can do, so you can set the camber by rotating it, or you can give it some caster by moving it backwards or forwards. You don't have too much because the control arm, if you get too crazy with it, will come in contact with the coil spring. So I don't know how much adjustment is supposed to be in it on camber or caster, but that's how you adjust it on this particular setup. So we're just going to kind of eyeball it centered. I mean, obviously we're going to align it. We're going to put some anti-seize in our set screws. There's two set screws that go in here. We're going to put them in and just snug them down. That's pretty much the gist of the suspension. So now we're going to take off this rotor and we're going to we're going to pack it. We're going to make sure that it's packed. You can't be cruising no 150 on dry wheel bearings. All right, we got a bigger set of pliers. Oh, 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 yo! Yeah. Looks like they're packed. I'm gonna take them all the way apart and make sure. So we got our little, this is a little uh, locking tab that goes over the nut. And then you put the cotter pin through it. Wheel bearing nut off, flat washer, and your wheel bearing. It looks like they're somewhat packed. We're gonna, we're gonna redo them. We got the seal popped out and it does look like they, they packed the wheel bearings, but I'm gonna, you know, double do it. Double, I'm gonna double do it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack them again. I'm gonna repack them. But I wanna give you a little tidbit. See this, this grease in the center here, this, this here, Absolutely worthless. The grease doesn't migrate to the bearings. So if you, whatever's in the bearing, it's all in there. You, you don't you don't fill up the center of the hub with extra grease. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. It doesn't go to the bearing. So just you don't fill up the whole thing with grease. Just a little. Looks like laffy taffy. Well, yeah, want some? Mmm. With all the grease here inside, for the majority of it, we don't need this big old blob. So now we're gonna take our bearing and we're gonna put in a little little packer here. We're gonna do it the the new new hip way. Just give it a little a little squeeze. Until you see it squish up. See how it pushes through all the way around? It's all the packing you need to do to the wheel bearing. Packed all the way. So you take some of your fresh grease, just do a coating on the outside of it. Take a little more, do a little coating on your race. You put your bearing in there. That's all That's all the grease you do. You get your seal. You want to make sure to put a little lube on the lip. So get a little light coat of oil. And if you have a spring, this one doesn't have a spring behind it, but if you have a spring seal, it's a good idea to pack grease in there to hold the seal in place. So then we just put our seal back in. Same on the spindle here. You don't need this big blob of grease. It's not. It's not helping anything. So we're gonna we're gonna do away with all that. And it's a good thing at this time. Double check these backing plate bolts. And we're gonna do the same with our outer bearing. Gotta hold it all together. So you hold your outer. You want to go on straight so you don't beat up your seal. Just put it right on there. Move around. It's gonna burp a little bit because you get a little air pocket in between the two. Your washer. And you see how it's got a little locking groove so it just doesn't rotate and try to un unspin the nut. And I normally put. The radius side to the bearing. I don't know why. I don't think it really matters, but it's what I do. Because then I have the flat side for the nut. You don't really worry about wiping it off because you want a little bit of grease on here to make it a little smoother to tighten down. And when you tighten this, it's not a get a big bar and just crank on it. All you need is a pair of pliers. And you rotate it as you tighten down. You feel that it bottoms out. Rotate it like a little bit over snug. It's like it's like 35 foot pounds or something. It's all you're all you're torquing it to. Nothing, nothing crazy. We want to spin it as you go to make sure everything lines up. There's different notches, so you might have to reclock this so it lines up with your cotter pin. So then you put your cotter pin back in. Then we're going to put our dust cap, dust seal back on it. It's best if it's super tight to catch it on the lip so you don't beat the crap out of your seal and it falls off. And if you're worried about the cotter pin sticking out or being too close, you can spin it. And make sure it's not hitting on your cap or anything, you know, so you don't drive the road here and then because your cotter pin's in your dust cap. But there we go. So we're all good here. So we've got rotors all packed, tightened down, cap back on it. So now we're going to put our, um, our wheelwood caliper on it now. We're going to get that all aligned. So we got just some brake cleaner on a rag, wiped off any of the debris. So now we got our caliper. So these have the bleeders on, so we can go either, either way because it'll have a bleeder on the top. You just want to make sure the bleeder's supposed to be on top. You almost hold it and you want to, you want to check that it's centered because this isn't a full float it's a solid fixtured caliper so we need to align it so it wears the pads evenly and then it so it doesn't hit the rotor so rubbing on the rotor 
on the inside here. So we need to shim the caliper inward, centered up. We have more room on this side. So the shims are pretty thin. So you can kind of put one in here and see. I think two would be too much. I'm gonna do one. So we got the got the caliper put on. I had to wind up using three three shims. Then I put the 90 fitting, so it's eighth inch to dash three on the caliper, put a little Teflon paste on it. So the passenger side's all done now. We got the uh, rack put on it. It's the two, two mounting bolts. So the rack's, rack's done. And then I put the outer tie rod, got the nut tied and the cotter pin in there. I just left the adjuster loose. We're gonna get the driver's side together now. All that put together. And then we'll get the, the steering shaft put in it. Caliper all finished up. Got the brake line on this side. Turned out really, really cool, man. Things looking, looking trick. Got the, everything adjusted. Everything's good. So the only thing we have to do now is when we get it on the ground and get the control arm, because these little boots are a little de deformed from so long of sitting at the wrong shape. We gotta get this thing at ride height. Straighten out these boots and grease, degrease the outer tie rods. Suspension's all done. Then after we got this finished up, we went ahead and put the steering shaft in it, got the U-joint or the Heim joint adjusted here that supports the lower column. And then I wound up welding this like I was talking about in one of the previ previous videos because of the lock nuts. You see where it had the, it's hard to see, but it had the two, two jam nuts in it, one right there, one right there. And with them in there, this header, it was really close to this header and I didn't like how when it swung around, I didn't want to risk nicking the header every time. So I just took the two jam nuts out. So now we got the suspension and everything done. Now we're gonna go ahead and put on the, the brake lines that we already made. So we got our two brake lines and then we're not, I'm not gonna put on the, cause there's the, the bracket for the slave has to go on first before the master cylinder. And I got to still uh, bend it a little bit more like I talked about just to straight out the slave cylinder, make it easier to bleed and then the, to get the shaft straightened out a little bit. So we're not gonna put the master on yet. So these lines are just gonna sit there. So we'll probably put a vacuum cap or something on the top of them here to keep debris getting in them. Cause now we're all final, final assembling this. So now we got the, all the um, front brake lines ran. These are gonna go to the portioning valve and that's gonna hold them away. So it won't get hit when you turn the steering wheel. All right, so I don't know if we showed it or not yet, but we got new hinges, hood hinges for this thing. And we had them, we had them powder coated and then also Here's the inner fenders that come with the for the, the TCI inner fenders for the TCI front suspension. We're not gonna put them on right at the moment because I wanna wait until after I get the engine and tranny in here, just so I have room to get the headers and stuff down. So that's why we decided to go with the silver on the front subframe because everything else is black. So I don't think I showed you the front wheels and tires for this. Well, it's the same wheels. It's kind of like a rally wheel replica deal. We're running a Toyo. Uh, what is it, 245, 35, 18. And it's not quite as aggressive as, as the back as a 240 tread wear. And I can't remember the speed rating on it, but I'm pretty sure it's good for over 150. We'll be all right, we'll be able to keep up with Fiero. So we're gonna throw these things on here and give you an idea what this thing's gonna look like here. And you can see, see with the, the wheels on here that you can, you can t turn it lock to lock. We're, no, no problems. So probably could have went a little bit bigger Got plenty of room. Got a good sized tire. Shouldn't have any issues with it rubbing anything. I showed them before on the rear, but I got one of the center caps here. Just to give you an idea. So it's pretty much, we're not gonna do like a beauty ring. We're just gonna do the center caps. So it's just gonna look like a ginormous rally wheel. The only thing that's gonna give it away that it runs pretty all right is it's got bigger wheels on it. So that's what we got so far. That's where we're at. We got the front end back on it. So next we're gonna get the engine and training in it. So make sure you come back and check out the the next go around, next episode of the little 65 Chevy Nova here. Number six, paint all rear suspension. So the rear suspension has been sitting, been sitting around the garage right now, just bare metal. So Kevin Jones, good old Kevin Jones, shout out to Kevin Jones, but he's going to be painting all of the rear suspension. So it'll, it'll help us. So I can cross off number six, paint all rear suspension. Yeah, we're just really excited, man. This is looking really well. We love that silver on black look. All right, so I said we're gonna be crossing off stuff as we go. 
on this list. So obviously we got the front suspension bolted back together, so I'm gonna cross that off. Well, I can't really do it with one hand, but we're gonna cross it off. It'll be crossed off. And then paint rear suspension, Kevin Jones has done that for us, so we're gonna cross that off as well. Uh, this is really horrible cross off draw, but it's, so one and six are done. So we got the rest of this. So now in between videos, we're gonna focus on finishing both of the floors. And then we're gonna, in the next video, we're gonna set the engine and trans in the car once and for all and we're going to complete mini tub, or at least start on the mini tub. We're gonna start on the mini tub and hopefully finish it in between videos because the floors and that mini tub are right now the biggest concerns of taking a lot of time to get the car done. So if you guys enjoyed the video, go down below, hit the subscribe button, and check out some other videos we got on the channel right about here. If you guys have been enjoying the videos, keep on staying tuned, man. We're gonna get this thing done and we're gonna go on and drive it. We're gonna have some fun. So I'll see you guys all next time.